Hey everyone, uh, hope you're doing great. Just to give you a glimpse of what we will be discussing today, we will be discussing about how to create custom object uh, within HubSpot and how to customize HubSpot and what plans basically the custom object comes with and uh, what are the use cases of uh, creating a custom object within HubSpot. So let's get started. Uh, okay, so have this dem uh, demo account because I'm a partner, so we have access to enterprise demo account, which we normally use to display the demo as per the industry for our clients. So let's go into our context first and let's build up something, a custom module. Let's say we have a custom module uh, that we want to, uh, that particularly shows how many uh, events we have uh, like our contact have pass participated in and as it's not a built-in uh, feature to get insight on the uh, events uh, aside from marketing events we don't have a specific particular instance that how can we create or manage events for a particular contact so let's get started so what we're going to do is basically uh, we will see that we will say that okay we need a uh, we need a contact a uh, custom uh, object for a contact that is events. So let's go to our settings first. In the settings, uh, we will be going to the uh, custom objects. Under the objects, we will go to the custom objects. Okay, we already have a custom object trainings which I created. So now what we're gonna do is we will create a new custom object for it, right? So the way we're gonna do is is we will search online. I will give this uh, description inside our, the uh, in the description of this video as well. So this is basically the URL that you will be going straight away. You will go to the object schema. You will say create a new schema from in the drop down here. Okay, and you will just basically give a name to the schema. So this time we uh, are creating events. So let's say events and events the singular. Events, events, events. Okay, we will say event name required property. Then we will go to the uh, event name. Or just be small. So have a small. Okay, and uh, no, this will be bit of, Okay, so this will be small. Okay. Then uh, what happens here is that there will one error that you can um, probably find out that you might not be able to see the uh, the primary display property. So the way you can solve that is basically if you scroll all the way down over here, it will show you something like uh, like it says hide extra parents, but it will show show all parents. So that if you click on that show all parents, it will basically uh, show you this primary display property. If you feel that error or if you find that error, you can do that and it will basically solve the error for you. Then you will give a name. Uh, basically, I already created a training module. So you will see that there are a lot of names that already exist in here. that are pre-populated, but you can obviously change those and then uh, that, that would work. Now, let's go up all the way up. Okay, now what we're gonna do is basically, uh, we will say the, what is the singular name of the module? What is the plural name? How would you pronounce it plural? Because that is where the display will be shown here. Like if you go to the context module, so you will basically uh, be seeing when you click on here as a custom module, you will be seeing here as a plural name because that's a convention, okay? So that's, the conventionally you will put a plural name then you will require an api name this is the property api name what will be the first property of that module which is required and then with that what is the primary display property which is again the same as the required properties right uh, it could be different it could be uh, related to some other data type it could be uh, an email it could be any anything any particular email shouldn't be the type of field because email is already linked to an account and account is already a required uh, object over here. So we will go to that as well uh, shortly where we define the required object or relational objects. So this is the event name and then we will go and give the same property name that we have defined here. 
and place the name here and the label as event name. So this basically uh, proper like what properties to create. It's just we are creating a schema. I will just I will explain what schema is shortly. Okay, and uh, so this is it, and then. Yeah, and this is the associated objects. Uh, either we want to associate it to a contact company or a deal. Let's say we don't want to deal. Uh, it's not associated to any deal or it's not associated to any company. We can do that. And with that, we can also have the features or possibilities of all these uh, custom modules that we can associate it to it. Let's like, say if we want to uh, ticket or tickets, if we say uh, we just want to add it to a ticket as well. So we know which tickets have been created for this uh, module. Okay, so we will say ticket and make sure that you are in the upper cases all. So and then we will give a name to it. And once we are done with it, we will go here and we will basically find out the API uh, API test key, API key, which we already have. And we will show you how to do that. So basically the way to you can get the access to API key is uh, you will go to the search function you will go to the search bar and i have already done the search on my end that's why it's showing me hubspot api key but if you click on it it will show you the api if you haven't got an api you can create a new api if you already have an api it basically give you access to that api key with that uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we will test the call before testing the call what i would do is i will give you a uh, quick glimpse of uh, what is a schema. So every API call that you do, uh, we are doing it within the system. That's why we don't need an authentication. But if we do it through an Postman or other mules of any other service to do the same thing, we will be needing an uh, header or authentication header that is a different documentation for that. But aside from that, we will be needing an API that uh, is uh, like basically the key that the system takes go to the system tells the system that okay we are authentic request and system approves that request and the record is created within the system so the body of that request is basically the schema that we are defining here the name and all that stuff so let's say let's test call one thing to confirm is confirm post request this is uh, like a permanent changes that would be made in the system so obviously you can delete them at the later stage but at the moment you you need to be make sure that whatever you are doing, you are aware of it. So you will just say confirm post request. So once you do that, uh, okay, done. Now we'll come way and if the header request is 201, we see that all this request has gone through. Now if we come here and if we go to our context module and uh, we refresh this, okay, and then we can basically find the events module over here. So now we have an events module. If we, let's say we uh, have, if we go to the context module and we open up any of the context that we have, let's say we have this uh, test contact. And if we see here, the events module is are, uh, available. So now what is this? This is basically exactly what we did here. So this is the relation that we created for the context module and similarly we have for tickets as well if we go to the tickets we will be able to find the exact details of this module in the tickets as well so now so as we have already discussed this let's let's conclude this so what we have done here uh, we basically created a custom module within hubspot then we assigned that custom module uh, property to different modules that were already existing uh, it could be contact company deals tickets so whatever the existing modules are if there is an already existing custom object you can give that name as well just to make sure that uh, upper cases are well there. and that's that's it you can create custom object and this is one of the greatest features in hubspot that gives you a leverage of uh, modifying the interface uh, according to your business requirements and if you have any sort of complex requirements you believe there you are not sure about the data types or anything uh, feel free to reach us and one thing i want to add here this feature is only available in any of the enterprise if you have subscribed for marketing sales or support any of the enterprise uh, plan, plan this feature would be available for you so this was it from my end and this is it from the hubspot partner uh, team uh, all about hubspot that we are catering with right now 
And so if you have any questions, any queries, you can feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn at Waheed Kader LinkedIn, or you can drop me an email at Waheed Kader or Waheed at consulttomanage.com. I will be more than happy to assist you and uh, looking forward to answer your questions and stay tuned for more of these videos. Thank you.